Welcome back to Make, Build, Modify. I'm Justin, and today we're gonna to make a curved garden bench. About 10 years ago, I built a cedar deck around a log cabin, and around that deck, we poured a decorative concrete patio. And that concrete patio had curves in it, and the owners want us to build benches to match those curves. So I had to cut curves in the planks with a jigsaw, and today I'm gonna to use similar methods to build this bench. I started by drawing a one quarter scale drawing of a two by six. This is an eight foot two by six, and I'm gonna draw a grid on it so I can draw arcs that represent the curve I'd like to get out of the two by six. The arc is going to be a three inch wide piece of wood, and I want it to be fairly consistent and not fall outside of the two by six. So that's what this exercise was for. Now I know what shape I'm after, I can draw it full size on a piece of masonite. Masonite is a high density fiberboard and it's really good for making stencils. I'm drawing the same set of lines or the same grid that I drew in the scale drawing on the masonite. This is to help me find the arc's location more accurately. I'm drawing all the parallel lines and I'm going to draw the uh, lines perpendicular to that to establish the sections for each arc. I'm cutting the grid out of the sheet so I can flip it around while I'm drawing the arcs. It's a lot easier to handle with it just being a narrow strip. I'm clamping it down to the bench so I can create some registration lines to draw the arcs. What I'm going to do here is use these little, I think, five penny nails to establish a point where the arc starts and ends in a section. An arc is a section of a circle, and in this particular instance, it's 58 and a quarter inches for the radius. So I'm, I'm pulling that measurement from each nail and crossing the two lines and finding the center of what would be that circle. And this gives me a common point that should be able to draw an arc from those original two nails from point to point. This first arc is from the nail I just set. The second arc is from another nail I set exactly three inches back from that, so I get a three inch wide board. Now to draw the next section, I have to rotate the stencil and realign it with the registration lines I, I created when I drew the first arc, and I'm gonna swing these two arcs from the same original nails that I placed for the center of the circle. I did that two more times and now I have the same curve that I had in my scale drawing. I'm using a bandsaw to cut this stencil out, but you could use a jigsaw to do it too. Uh, it's really important to cut up to the line and not, not beyond the line. There's going to be inconsistencies in your cut and what I tend to do is come back with a belt sander and kind of smooth them all out. You can see here, I've got a few spots that were not great, and it, it goes right up to the line after you're done sanding it. I purchased seven two by six cedar boards and two four by four boards for the legs. I'm choosing the pieces that will be the best for the top of the bench. Now I'm going through the planks to find the best surface of each plank and I'm going to organize them in the order in which they're going to be on the bench. Once I found that, I'm going to flip them upside down so I can apply the stencil to the bottom of the planks. I'm applying the stencil to the bottom of the planks because I'm going to fasten it to them. I'm using screws for a couple reasons. I want the stencil not to move while I'm tracing it and I'm also going to remove the stencil to cut the, the plank on the bandsaw, and then I'm going to place the stencil back using the screws for registration marks to flush cut it at the router table. I 
I also marked an X on the end of the stencil and the planks so I could orient them again later. When I cut the planks, I'm trying to leave a little bit of wood between the blade and the pencil. That's because I'm going to flush cut with a router and it's going to do all of the final cutting. If you go past the line, you'll leave a divot you can't recover. I'm reinstalling the stencils and I like to back the screw up until it falls into the original thread. That way I know the registration hole is lined up perfectly. I'm adjusting this so the bearing rides on the stencil and the blade cuts right at the top of the blank. I'm removing the stencil for the last time. I'll save that for another bench. And now I'm going to adjust all of these to where the curves fit together as tightly as possible. The wood kind of warps when you cut it and it's, you just have to shimmy the wood back and forth until you get those to fit tight. I'm gonna pull them all together with clamps and that way I get the best possible orientation. And once I get these clamps all together, I'm gonna to flip the wood over and draw some registration lines so I can bring those planks back to this location when I'm installing them on the bench. I'm lining the stencil up to one of the planks temporarily to use the parallel lines as a guide for square for the end of the bench. That way I can cut the end off square to the original geometry. I like to use round objects to, to round over corners. It's the simplest way to mark a corner and, and find an aesthetic as far as I'm concerned. Compasses work, but you just have to find that center. And I usually use a, a bottle cap or something round, whatever I see that seems like it's gonna make a nice corner. I'm using a right angle grinder with a seven inch disc sander on it. I think it's 60 grit. And then I finish up with a belt sander to smooth out the corner. This is a quarter inch roundover, and I'm going to use it on all edges of the plank, top and bottom. Western red cedar is a fairly soft wood, and sometimes the bearings on the router bits will leave marks. So I'm coming back with a belt sander to clean up that, plus any milling marks the flush cut might have left. I only sanded the outside edges of the two outer planks on the bench. Those are the only edges that will be visible once the bench is put together. I also sanded the tops and the corners with 150 grit sandpaper. Now I'm going to build the leg assemblies. These are the cleats that allow me to fasten the legs to the bench. They do a couple things. They space the legs out and hide the bolts I use to fasten the legs. And they also allow me to fasten the planks to the legs from the underside so you won't see any fasteners on the top of the bench. I decided to use a closet rod as a brace for the legs to keep them from spreading. I'm marking the legs here for the location of the dowel. I lined them up for consistency. And I'm using a square to find center. I drilled one inch deep in the legs and I cut the dowel at seven inches. 
That way I have a five inch spread between the legs. I used my plastic dead blow hammer to drive the closet rods into the legs. It's a little bit harder wood than the cedar legs. And then I used a rubber mallet to drive the second leg onto the dowel so as not to dent the wood. Now I need to draw some reference lines to accurately locate the legs on the cleats. I'm centering them up and then I'm going to create a side line so that I know that they're centered on the cleat. And this is going to help me place the legs before I screw them in. I'm going to use hot glue to tack them in location and that way I can flip the entire assembly over and not worry about the legs moving. I'm using a Forstner bit to drill a countersink for my lag bolts that are going to be in the center. I'm also pre-drilling so I don't split the posts. I'm going to use three inch screws on the four corners of these squares I drew. And then I'm going to use a six inch lag in the center of each leg. I wanted a little bit of space between each plank and I needed a way to space that out and I decided that bamboo skewers would be a good tool for that and it worked great. I located the leg assembly about nine inches from the edge of the bench and I used two two and a half inch screws in each plank. I installed the middle leg assembly kind of crooked. I used the arc as a guide to determine where I wanted it, but I just used my eye and did what I thought looked nice. Each assembly ends up receiving 10 screws, so they're very strong. Because some of this wood had warp in it, the end of the bench didn't align the way I'd like it to, so I decided to add cleats to the end to straighten them out. I used a water-based spar urethane in a rattle can. It seemed to work pretty, pretty well. This is a satin finish and I did about three coats of satin and then I followed up with a semi-gloss and I sanded uh, right before the last coat. I think it really produces a nice finish. It, I like how it's not too shiny and I think it really shows off the natural wood grain very well. And here's a couple more shots of the bench out in the natural sunlight. I think it was a very nice project. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I have the tools and materials listed in the description for this build, and if you think I've earned it, please subscribe.